Thank you. 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 Thank you.
gravitate and find their own level in there. And that'll, that'll leave them happy because if you force them into a level they're not comfortable with, once again, the hardcore players will tell you to suck and the casual players will just leave. One of my favourite little devices, and one we don't use nearly often enough, is hidden cruelty. Um, I a couple of smirks out there rec recognising the, the, the atrocity being committed on the Sin City there. Um, now you see, your casual gamers, they're quite happy to take a game like SimCity and just play around and build the city. But your hardcore guys, you know, like most of us in the room probably, we're a little bit more inquisitive and we like to try stuff out. And we'll do things like, we like to build the city, but then we like to throw up a volcano in the middle of it and see what happens, or send Godzilla loose on the city, or have UFOs come down and blast the city. Um, Having that sort of in there for the hardcore gamers to find gives them a little hook in the casual game. Uh, the Sims is another great example. I mean, the Sims is going to be one of the most casual of casual games I've ever seen. But uh, the number of friends I had who, who just used to find hours of enjoyment in putting their Sims in the swimming pool and pulling the ladder out and watching them drown, or building the room with no doors and then putting their Sims inside and not feeding them and watching them starve to death. <laughs> I'm certain that Will Wright thought of this shit right when he was when he was throwing that game. Okay. <laughs> he knew that was fun. He was putting it in there on purpose. Uh, and lastly, my okay, I, I started to run out of pictures at this stage, so I started pulling stuff from long cats. Okay. Um, innovation is a way of solving the interface problem that we find is inherent where uh, casual games like very intuitive interfaces, hardcore games like very evolved interfaces. If you can provide an innovative interface, uh, you actually, it, it, it sort of appeases both camps. And by that I mean the casual gamers can pick up, they can pick up their Wiimote and just play some tennis with it. Very, very intuitive for them. But I mean, we all know, and we probably all do, like, a lot of us here own Wiis, and Hardcore though we may be, we will also pick it up and quite enjoy playing it. It's, it's something new. So innovation is great because innovation is quite, it gives you something intuitive for the casual people and it gives you something novel for the hardcore people. Hardcore people love something new to mess around with. Okay, I'm going to skip over now to hardcore games and we're going to have a look at how we could make hardcore games more casual. Um, <coughs> Probably most of us here are actually involved in the uh, in the creation of hardcore games. I suspect it's, it's mostly what uh, what game developers around this part of the world seem to do. So this is I, I'm guessing this is the really kind of meaty bit of the talk. Another thing that we don't use nearly often enough is uh, gimmicks. And Peter Molyneux, one of my favourite designers, he, he is the master of the gimmick. When Peter Molyneux describes a game to someone, he describes kind of, he gives it a broad stroke. He, he tells you something broad about the game, and then he fills it in with a few little details. And, and what, what he's really doing, uh, whether he does this uh, consciously or not, I don't know. But how it, how it works is that for all the hardcore people, he's, painting, he's giving you an overview of the game that we intuitively understand, and he's trying to hook the casual people in with a few cool features that he highlights. So when we design games, we should really think about how we can describe them to our marketing departments uh, in these terms and give them ideas of how they can how they can express these gimmicks to uh, to retail and to distributors so, so that more copies can you know, get purchased. Now, Fable, one great example. Peter Mullen, you when you described Fable, I believe it said something like uh, paraphrasing here. Uh, it's a game where the world changes as the play as, as the play progresses. Really dynamic world. So that's his broad stroke. And then there's this little bit of detail he's filled in, and your player can gain scars and trees and grass and grow. That's kind of a dumb little thing, right? But, but what he's done is he's, uh, he's given you the broad stroke there where he's told the player that, yeah, it's Fable, it's an RPG, you've got a persistent character, he's told us all what we need to know to sort of classify the genre. And then he's given you a couple of cool things to tell you. It's, it's a really dynamic world, he gives us two examples. An even better example of his is black and white, we've described black and white. And he's kind of told you in the broad stroke that black and white is a game where uh, 
there's this world 